good job. I don't remember the exact mission counts, but I think they do a reasonably good job on the mix of how often you see those races and things. And we're going to try to keep that going going forward. Are you going to have the control bonus missions, like with the Ferritool prophecies as well, something similar in Heart of the Storm? Um, don't know yet. We're really working on that. We've definitely heard the, the urge to have that kind of mixed up, and it was totally fun for us to make those missions. We had a blast making those missions. Um, but Kerrigan, as you can imagine, um, doesn't have a lot of friends. Right. right. I don't see Zeratul show up going, check it out. Right? Like, he's <laughs> not, she's not going to do that. So um, we need to work out the story conceit for that, and then we need to figure out kind of where it goes, but it's, it's something we're definitely looking at. Yeah, it, it definitely needs to feel like it's this part of it, not here's the moment where we make up an <laughs> excuse to have you play again. It, it needs to it needs to work in context with the story. Or work well enough. Work, work well, well enough, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the <laughs> wings <laughs> were that great, but it, <laughs> 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 it worked well enough. Like it was, I think it was okay. Is the Matt Marcus race something you guys want to bring to Heart of the Storm still? As, as close as we can. Yeah, certainly. We're, we're definitely at work on it. It's a, it's a huge undertaking. Our, you know, without getting into any specifics, our intention is to, you know, bring the beginnings of, of uh, what we intend to have in a much uh, bigger sense later um, to first come online at or around Heart of the Storm. So, um, you know, what that means, we'll get into more details later. That'd be an amazing story. I, I know there were some ideas about having the MMR go into the custom game. Um, like there was like talk about it, like it'd be nice if I played Bejeweled and someone was or Star Jeweled and someone was even level or maybe even the Blizzard. Star Jeweled did make me want that. Or, or, <laughs> the, or the Blizzard All Stars. It, has there been any discussions or any thoughts as those custom games are being developed? Yeah, that's up by anyone. Yeah, I mean definitely. It's it's an option there that we have where you can basically set up a ladder of matchmaking around the same time of the map, um, wherever it makes sense. So and when you have time. And when we have time. Yeah, so so it's, it's something that we can. I don't remember we would do it in the custom game UI. We'd probably pull that out now and put it somewhere else with the more traditional approach where you can select what version of the game you want to play, what race, if any, you want to choose and then launch, and then you would match make it. But yeah, it's definitely stuff we talked about. To be honest, there's a longer list of things we want to do than the list of achievable things, certainly in the short term. Um, so those sorts of things are, are exactly what we talk about all the time. It's like, oh, this would really make this thing. And now we need to find out when the time is we can do it. It's the Jack 5000 Plus thing that we're getting right now of all the different, you know, we've got Blizzard Dota going on, um, efforts towards Marcus Lake, maintaining the service and adding features so that people understand what's going on with Games of Liberty and, you know, adding the custom game. So we're trying to deliver as quickly as we can while still, of course, the biggest thing being Heart of the Swarm, Heart of the Swarm coming out, which is huge for us. So We definitely learned what I think WoW is known for many years, which is how challenging it is to maintain a live service and at the same time, be building your next thing, um, which is just not how, I mean, I guess you guys did this more than I did, you know, on, on Warcraft 3, but it's not how a lot of software development's done. You usually get to press stop and go on, um, and, and we're not, what we're doing is just like we're continuing to update, we're adding things like, you know, masters and grandmasters, and we're doing some mod maps, and we're doing customized hotkeys, and, you know, we're trying to get some chat channel functionality in, and doing hot or not, whatever we can do, right, to kind of <laughs> keep it going, um, or fun or not, I guess we'll just find the call, but um, trying to get it to kind of, you know, um, work has, has definitely been a, a challenge. I think we've done a better job looking back at uh, Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos 2, the Frozen Throne versus StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty, and Heart, Heart of the Swarm. We basically went dark, um, definitely from a content standpoint for Reign of Chaos because we just we had to plow through into this thing and we were uh, killed all over the place, honestly. <laughs> um, we're, we're delivering a lot more content, a lot more upgrades this time around, so I think we're doing better. Um, but those things like you know matchmaking on Star Jewel, how cool would that be? It's awesome. We want to get that in there. <coughs> Um, but when is, is the question, and how, and how do we and what, what get the cut and not done stuff to do to get there? Yeah. Some of the features that people have added in Hacker since we've launched over the years, too. Significant. Yeah, it's been yeah. way different than uh, Warcraft 3. Reign right? yeah. yeah. of Chaos, we basically went dark on yeah. Friday. Yeah. Like we never rolled out like some custom game features, Grandmaster features, chat channels, all this kind of stuff. It, it took, it, it was because we were still on fire. I mean, it was, we, we were better set up to do it today than we were then. It's still hard, though. Any plans for new mini games uh, in Heart of the Storm, like uh, Lost Lightning in Wings of Liberty? We'd certainly like to. We don't. I don't have anything on the books yet. Like I don't know what it would be. We haven't started working on it. Um, but that would certainly be a lot of fun. Kerrigan on the Leviathan has a uh, arcade machine. Yeah, machine. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> infested arcade machine. Infested arcade machine behind yeah. one of the little <laughs> flaps. Uh, Remember a skateboard and Tony Hawk's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> their Xbox 360 yeah. back there. Is that what they play in the future? It is. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we 
are making significant upgrades to the editor. Um, we are also working on uh, delivering as much as we can to the, the mod community. Um, we've done, you know, huge patches, introduced lots of little tweaks that are improved triggers, um, mm -hmm. you know, refinements across the board. We're starting to put out tutorials online, mm -hmm. and we're firing on a lot of different, um, you know, cylinders uh, as best we can on that front. But yeah, the big stuff is going to come and try and be, you know, kit around the Heart of the Storm time frame, and then, you know, hopefully we'll do some more stuff by uh, Legacy. And so I can talk a little bit about, um, for example, the UI editor for the trigger stuff. We're we're definitely taking a look at that. We know we actually delivered something that was way more than what you could do in Warcraft 3. It originally intended to speed it up, and we're like, well, let's see what happens. And then people start going crazy with it, and they've deli uh, you know, developed some awesome games and some really fun experiences. But we realized, like, well, this, we made this really hard for them, and it's not that easy to make the UI. So right now we're looking at a lot of different things and trying to make that easier for the game. All done, okay. <laughs> Another question. In the Wings of Liberty campaign, there's quite a lot of like campaign specific units like the Diamond Bats and whatnot. Yes. Are we gonna be seeing maybe some Zerg specific units or perhaps some old Brood War units brought back? I know we mentioned earlier the Defiler. Yeah, I think it's quite possible. I, I could certainly see units like the Defiler and the Wrecker might make the cut to come back in. Um we you know, the, a lot of the Wings units were failed um multiplayer units that had art done for them and we thought they could kinda work. Um, I don't know that all of them did at the end of the day. Um, our, our goal is going to be, um, ultimately, to try to make sure that our choices for uh, Heart of the Storm are a little crisper and a little cleaner than they were in Wings of Liberty. There were certainly some choices, like I gave the example today of Hellion versus Firebat. Choose, really. I mean, there's an implied choice there, but there's not. There's really one answer. It's Firebat. Right? And you should not use Hellion. Hellion's better in multi, where speed is more useful. Um, in a campaign where you want to survive, you don't want to waste resources, you want something that can be healed by a medic. Um, you know, the Firebat is, is generally the better choice. And so we're going to try to make sure that whatever we end up adding, that they don't end up stepping on a bunch of other units. And really, at the end of the day, there's one right choice, and don't be dumb and choose the other one. Because that's, that's just really lousy game design at the end of the day. That's just a, you know, can you use the internet to find the right answer um, is all that's really asking you to do. Okay. So just to step on market player a little bit, I, I know in a lot of interviews, uh, you guys said you wanted to keep the, the unit pool small. Yep. And especially in the multiplayer, so it doesn't know, like, you don't water down the experience for, yep. for the viewers. How many units do you expect to add in the multiplayer portion? Um, is it, like, types of upgrades? And are you right. considering right. removing units that you don't see a lot of use for? Yeah. Yes, to the r yes, we could definitely remove units. We have no idea how many we can add before it starts to feel overcrowded, yeah. right? Before it starts to feel watered down. Um, as you can imagine, this challenge is extremely real. We are pushing brood war numbers on our units. And every time we try to make a move, we often find, hey, I got this great idea. It's five for the Bailey, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for Bailey. Yeah. Karen Bailey, congratulations. Okay, okay, right? Um, you know, and so it's very easy to, to repeat ourselves. And so we're definitely finding this very challenging. So I don't know what the answer is. Um, we could very easily um, remove old units and replace them with something that's cooler. We could very easily add on. Um, we could maybe just tune and tweak and maybe a combination of all three. Um, we, we don't know the answer to that question yet. Are, are there any units in specific that might hit the chopping block that you were thinking about removing? Or is it just really the target? No, I can say ones that I think aren't that cool. Like, I don't think the Overseer is that cool. Like, you've got what you need to do, but he really does one thing, really. I mean, yeah, you can corrupt stuff, but really he's kind of this glorified scout, right? And he's just basically um, different art for the Overlord. It seems like that's a unit slot that could be a lot sexier, you know? Um, that would be an example. You can see them throughout the game. You know, we've had troubles with Reapers since I was four years, since I was this high, right? Like, <laughs> forever. Um, even though, you know, even now I'm seeing them in the GSL and opening matches again, which I still, like, well, I thought we agreed this unit wasn't supposed to be used. <laughs> right? I, I got the memo. The Reaper sucks. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, you know, we'll definitely look at, you know, maybe tuning some of these. Like I said, I could certainly see the Overseer getting a wholesale replacement with something, hopefully, that um, gives you some more choices and more, some more options. Um, so, uh, but I don't know for sure, you know. Even that, maybe, I, I can't imagine them finding something great for the Overseer, but if they did, we could go back on that. But there could be other units out there as well that I think right now are kind of not that cool, and then I'm surprised when they come you know, back into the limelight. Because remember, too, as we change anything, if we add one unit, suddenly some other unit that didn't see a lot of use before is suddenly the king of the world, right? So we'll have to sort of swing it and test and see what's there. Yeah, we, we got a question uh, in a couple of the interviews up there about, um, Justin had said in some of the other interviews about, um, you know, we made a conscious choice to remove if we added a unit or 
uh, StarCraft II, we removed the unit from the original game, basically, and it was sort of like that was the rule at the close. time. We were close. And, and we, yeah, we were basically close. We added some uh, in we addition. Just, I think but we bloated a little bit. Yeah, we bloated a little bit, and, and um, in, in my opinion, at least, I think Brood War levels are, you know, getting up to that amount where it doesn't make it a better game to exceed it. And so we d there's no mathematical formula. There's no spreadsheet that goes, there it is. Once you hit 16 and, you know, 14 buildings. And this many done. upgrades and that many right. committed powers, now you're done. Right. 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 It, the right. right answer is not more. I think that's, that's at least, at least clear from my, my perspective. So um, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean we can't get more, but it's definitely one of those questions of, like, uh, how do we even know? Well, you might very well um, see scenarios where one race gets, you know, two more units, and another race gets one, and another race gets just some tweaks to existing units. I mean, that could totally be the case. But that's what makes sense for the game. Like you hear them screaming right now about that, whatever race they are. Yeah. Like, not my race! I want all new stuff! Um, but but we would have to do what's right for the game, and we hopefully will have the courage of our convictions to you know, make the game still really clean and really, really good. So when you play pretty much every game, Blizzard time is like, Faster than a second? Yeah. Is there any plans to do anything That's about that in single player and multiplayer? We don't actually compress that in single player. I think that's because you're on faster settings right now. But yeah, everyone, everyone plays on faster every, settings. Yeah, like that's what yeah. Right. Ladder is telling And you. particularly in like televised matches or even in single player, how long I've been playing and played. I didn't, I didn't realize that was that distressing, but I can it's not. But it's I can certainly like take that as feedback, like right? Like yeah. I hadn't really been too worried about it. But if if that's a big enough issue, we can talk about it. I've seen it. Well, so oh yeah, no, I can I can answer one thing on it. It's like definitely from a display perspective, like seeing that time and seeing it go faster. And then I know there's been some comments like on ETM how to track the, the game time and stuff, and there's been a lot of confusion. So there is one thing you want to do, which is essentially remove that confusion. And we're talking about how to do that. It's not clear if we'll change the general time scale. You know, that's still being discussed, but one thing we have thrown around is how to make it so that the display is not confusing, like whether you play in real time or yeah. it's game time. The other thing, too, is because at the end, is the end of the score screen is based on mission time. Yeah. So then if you were, the game clock was one thing and the mission oh, clock was different. another, that would be confusing. I think that they're correct. I think they're the same right now, but they could be, <laughs> yeah. they the could be broken part, depending on what yeah. we do. Everything right? for the so. most part uses game time right now, but when you guys talk about faster, so it's faster, rather, mm -hmm. that's like the latter game, right? Like yeah. the matchmaking. But yeah. if you're playing custom, you can actually adjust it, so you could do it differently. So it's it is an odd thing that I think we need to be talking about instead yeah. of just talking about. Um, I have plans to watch Big Break the Fence. You brought this. Oh uh, yeah, we got a. It's one, one of those backlogs. It's, it's one of those. It's there. It's yeah, it's, it's definitely there. We definitely want to do it. I don't know. So. In the life cycle of StarCraft Two, I I see it happening. But I, yeah, that that does not tell you anything. Don't overdo that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> we're talking. You can do that, right? Within the life cycle of StarCraft Two, that's pretty specific. We got like a decade in there. Yeah. 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 Well, he, he promised. Now I can write e angry emails if yeah, you want. Exactly. Yeah. In, in eight years, you can write. <laughs> you so eight years is the next one then. Whoa. <laughs> Good job. Oh, I said in the life cycle. I don't know. <laughs> I screwed myself there. <laughs> How is Kerrigan resurrecting this week? Because like I, I, I saw it a lot of replies and we were just trying to do funny things. Kerrigan dies. How is she able to be resurrected? She didn't die right there. Uh, Actually, we don't, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> we, right now, it's just a game mechanic. We yeah. haven't figured out sort of all the lore gets to it. Um, is it you know is, is, is her consciousness being transferred to a new clone body and she's coming back? Is she just burrowing underground really quickly and reappearing at the hive? I, I don't know. We, we need to lock down the mechanic first, and then the lore guys will come in and say, that, that's dumb, you can't do that. Or they'll come <laughs> in and say, oh, that's okay, I can make it work for me. We, we often do, and I know this is shocking and hateful to the lore people, we often do put the game mechanic first, right? And then we come in, because the, the game mechanics are the hardest thing to get right, you know? And then the lore can often be changed a couple of different ways um, to make it work. Um, so we haven't figured out the mechanic for sure. This is what we got today, but this went in fairly recently, and so the lore still comes. Second question, is her is her burrowing as a cloak that can't move, is that just a placeholder, or? We've thought about this so much. <laughs> um, there, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> maybe. You're, you're yourself maybe. in a corner again. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not placeholder. That is where it is today, right? Um, and uh, because people felt it was weird for Kerrigan in the ghost outfit to start burrowing. But um, at the same time, you wanted to put one button to have your whole stack kind of go away for the enemy. Um, so I, I don't think it's kind of weird right now to have to look back at that. So, like, in early 2009, we saw some early concept art for, like, Wings of Liberty units. Could you guys maybe talk a bit about how you go about creating new units, like, brainstorming, or you just encourage units or something? Wow. 
No, but she said twenty six. So what we do is we do a lot of different things. Um, um, you know, uh, David's a big part of this, as is you know Matt Cooper and the level design team. I have uh, guys around the team um, who are very enthusiastic about multiplayer. You know, like uh, Ted Park is a uh, artist on our team who is a super enthusiastic multiplayer guy. It's just kind of different people on the team who are super enthusiastic. Um, we come up with ideas. You know, we check with them. We go and talk to them personally, or send them emails. We get ideas. And we really work on the mechanics almost exclusively first. And there are some exceptions to this. Like, we will say, you know, it would be really cool to have uh, uh, infantry with a jump pack, right? And then we'll try to make that work mechanically, you know? And sometimes we succeed and sometimes we don't. Um, you know, it would be really cool um, to have, uh, you know, um, if we wanted to have, we knew we wanted to have um, a Dark Dragoon and a regular Dragoon for a long time. And, and we tried to make mechanics that would work for those. So sometimes the art leads, right? And we go, oh, that's, that's, that looks so cool. I don't know what it does, but let's figure it out, right? And we'll, and we'll work on it that way. And sometimes we'll say, hey, you know what we need? We need, like, a fast AOE vehicle, right? I don't know. Draw some art, right? And then we'll get some art back that, that, that hopefully, you know, matches that vibe. So it kind of goes different ways for different is it, units. Is this down here already? It is. Um, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to know how the sausage is made. It's horrible. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we do it in different ways. Because you want to get, you, at the end of the day, you want something that is amazing for esports and feels I mean, Sammy often puts it, you want your cool superhero team. Like, when you look at that race, you want to go, oh, yeah, those guys are all visually 